Well, you said the CCJ found in our favor. I cannot really speak. I've been in a meeting since 9 o'clock this morning. I have not had a chance to get a report, so I don't know what the full details are. So I would prefer not to comment on something for which I do not have the full information. Um, my understanding is that 500,000 U.S. dollars was sought on by her representatives. That is not my understanding of what it is, but Mr. Board, I would prefer to speak more to the issues for which I spent the last several hours. Um, and I could speak to you once I've had a full reading. I, I don't even want, and no disrespect to the media, but I wouldn't want to read or to comment on what is in the press. Mm -hmm. I would want to see the full um, um, Judgment? I only brought it up because it was yes. a matter of immigration and security. No, no but I, I know that, but I'm just also explaining to you so that I give you full disclosure of my situation. I can't speak to something on uh, which, when you said they're ruling her favor, first of all, I'm not a lawyer, but I would need to find out what that means. So if I comment, it would be on partial information, and I don't think that mm -hmm. in the context of all that we've been doing here, that it is something that I, I can comment in the absence of those details. I was talking about the facilitation of travel again. Um, and I have more recent statistics I can cite. For example, if you want 2009, um, we had 23,409 Guyanese arrive. In 2010, we had 19,432 arrive. In 2011, we had 24,543 arrive. In 2012, 21,358 arrive. Now, we figured that you probably heard quoted whether the overall arrivals of Barbados, Barbados receives on average, a million visitors a year divided between, almost equally between land-based tourists and cruise ships. And so that 6% would have seen. Obviously, what you, you will see there, I, I cited the 2008 because that's when I started to deal with matters of immigration. That's when I became a minister of government in January 2008. So I was speaking of the period. Uh, one, when I was the minister of Sponsored Immigration, and the statistics were covered the period first five years of, of, of his administration. I, and I can tell you that, in fact, if you want, I can give you the corresponding result, um, figures as well in terms of refusal. I mentioned in 2008, of those 31,000 plus, there were 610. In 2009, of the 23.4 thousand, there were 269. In 2010, of the 19,432, there were 303 refusals. In 2011, of the 24,543, there were 365 refusals. And in 2012, of the 21,358, there were 63 refusals. So by any stretch of the imagination, we are talking about a small minority of persons which do not fall outside of probably the statistical norms for any other, any other national or nationality. So the point I'm making is I will simply try to put pay to some of the stories I see in some of the newspapers around the region, including some of those here, where they try to paint a picture. I was just saying to myself, I know you used to refer to, um, you know, when I look at these numbers, you know, it, it really boggled my mind that people never sought to, to get figures. That's why I like to quote figures, because I like to be factual. And so it would be nice to see how these things are in the context of immigration. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it speaks to issues of movement between citizens of the two countries in the first instance. Um, and so if we're talking about training, so we're simply saying that we will commit to pay for what we're doing so that there's clear understanding by persons such as yourself as to what obtains when we deal with movement persons. You mentioned tourism and training of destinations. What we are talking about there is the opportunity to build new experiences for prospective visitors. And in the case of Barbados um, and even Ghana, where we would have had significant numbers of persons who may be repeat visitors, that we are offering something which is enhancing the current um, travel options that we have. Um, so that, that is what we were talking about in terms of twin. As you might be aware, there is an effort to, via Guyana, open up northern Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, we currently in Barbados have a flight which comes from, if my geography serves me correct, south-east 
um, via um, uh, Sao Paulo. Now, if we can get persons traveling from northern Brazil through Guyana who are here on holiday to also look at Barbados as a destination, your research will probably show that Brazilians have reasonable amount of holiday which would allow them to engage in travel which might span to destinations. Similarly, if we look at the statistics from Barbados, we have a number of European and other visitors who have extended holidays and who would also be willing to experience some of, of what um, we have done. So in terms of twin destinations, we also know that in addition to ecotourism, heritage tourism is something that is becoming very popular among travelers. In Barbados, we recently would have had an inscription um, as British, historic British town and its garrison as a, um, a, a, a UNESCO heritage site. And I know that given the history of Georgetown and so on, and other parts of this country, the opportunity for seeking heritage status is one in which we've discussed the possibilities. And with those things, they offer additional opportunities for 20 days. There's a process by which you go through and you identify and so on. And so those 163 persons of the 21,000 last year, they will declare justification and the information. What are some of the reasons that might have uh, prevented those persons from being able to practice that? Uh, one of the things, which somebody might be refused because they might have been reported for some criminal activity, and they may turn up with a false passport, they may turn up with, um, you know, so a person who was deported, for example, um, is asked to stay out in the country for a very specific period of time, or you might have found somebody who might have come in and overstayed, and, and, you know, on more than one occasion, and, and so they're very sad of a number of things, but I can tell you they're all justified. But I hope that we don't get on upon 163 or 20 something when we are talking about job commission, which is exploring a number of attractive opportunities. And that is my concern. That we, there's so much that we can talk about. That I hope that your story, you said with Grant Diana Chronicle, will not focus on our 63 people and do not look at all the excellent opportunities that we're talking about for young people education, training, tourism. We won't focus on that. <laughs> and let me just add that uh, we have not had any reports at the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In other words, if someone felt that they were unjustifiably denied entry, that they would seek redress, um, which in the past used to uh, be the, the norm. And so uh, we haven't had anyone coming to the Foreign Ministry to ask us to seek redress. Um, so um, that, I think, tells us.